Awesome. All right, guys, lab code agents. We've got me, Tristan, Dan. Dan, where you at? Did you disappear? No, you're still there. Still here. And of course, awesome Nick. How you doing? Oh, awesome Nick. That, yeah, dude, that was the Nick. worst introduction ever. Shut the hell up. And let's get to it. All right, Stephen and Marcus. What's up, guys? Hey guys, how you doing? Excited I don't know Stephen and Marcus. They're from Canada. That's right. Wait, Marcus, are you in Canada? I'm in Canada. We're from. Right. I mean, I'm originally from the Bay Area in California, but yeah, I live in Canada. Now. That's can, I, can I just say we have never introduced anyone uh, in, in terms of where they're from and, until just now. That was we, the first time. These guys are in Canada, Canada, so so we're just letting you know right off the bat, it's not our fault. Don't blame us. <laughs> They're from yeah. Canada. <laughs> and you guys started a, a, a little company called Street Text. That's right. Yeah. And we've been looking them up and uh, playing with it. It looks pretty cool, man. You guys are, are full on doing Facebook marketing and you're going to show us in our group. Yeah, Street Text, baby. Facebook marketing machines in 30 minutes or less. Awesome. Yeah. Let's do it. Marcus, you want to kick it off? Yeah, I mean, so top of funnel – first of all, versus bottom of funnel, right? So the idea of Facebook marketing versus Google, SEO, Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com type of leads. So it's first important to realize that someone's scrolling down their newsfeed when they see one of your ads, but it's branded with your brand. So the idea of tapping into Facebook's algorithm with a, a great call to action, whether you're a seller or a buyer and clicking through, that's the idea that's different. They're not searching to buy or sell a home today. And so we've taken that concept. We're working, you know, spent millions of dollars now with Facebook and launched 50,000 plus ads. So we have a good idea of how to tap into that algorithm. And really essentially it's the cost per click that translates into a cost per lead. And so what you really want to become a master at is not only to run these funnels effectively, but to customize the automation to get your brand right in front of them. That means I'm a huge fan of video communication. We cannot do this type of lead gen if you're not willing to embrace face-to-face, -face, if you're not willing to embrace Facebook Messenger, if you're not willing to embrace things like BombBomb, Bomb, because everything comes down to that no like, and trust model. Everything comes down to the relationship side of this, and you have to build that no like, and trust, as we all know. Yeah, I mean, you guys have some questions on that, but I, mean, I think the, like, the real key element there is because it's on Facebook, and because you're the whole concept of top of funnel, I think that we always like to start here with anybody that we're talking to because rather than say a realtor.com lead or a Zillow lead, um, I think sometimes people do come to Facebook and they hope the leads are going to be the same in a way. And some of them are, I mean, you know, I think a lot of leads, just like any buyer, like even in retail stats, like 96% of buyers aren't ready to buy today. Maybe they're going to be ready in like, you know, a few days or a month or three months or whatever it is. But if you can, if you can grasp what Facebook can do, like I don't think there's any, I, I think Facebook is the most special platform right now for real estate agents in terms of building your influence, building your brand, you know, really building up your database and staying top of mind with these leads. And really, you know, even a lot of our leads that we work with with our agents, a lot of these leads prior to them, like they come through, they get value from the real estate agent, the real estate agent staying in front of them with retargeting ads and with, you know, monthly newsletters, whatever it may be. And a lot of these leads have decided to work with our agents before they even told the agent sometimes, because, you know, it's not like a Zillow lead or something where it's more competitive. This agent, this lead might be ready today, might be ready in a week, or it might be ready in a month, but because that agent's providing value to them and connecting with them on that one, one -on one you know, this, this, real, this, the, that like factor that they know you now, they like you now, they trust you now, and now you've won them and you don't have to even compete often with any other realtor. So that's, I think that's really the power of Facebook and all of our leads start there. So we always try to encourage everybody to come back to Facebook, to like bring the conversation back to Facebook, leverage messenger, leverage video. Yeah. We'll jump more into that. I mean, there's, there's strategies. There's, there's the idea of everyone got started on Facebook. If you're obviously marketing on Facebook. So why wouldn't you go back to Facebook messenger? Right. And it's the idea of the business page is your pay to play environment. The sponsored ad component of that. No one's scrolling down their newsfeed today and seeing your business page, even if they like it, even if they follow it, but what, if they are sponsored, they're seeing that. Now what they are seeing is your personal Facebook. So I'm a huge fan of turning it back to Facebook as your CRM. And I use, um, and I teach a, a model that not, I, I feel like not a lot of people are really getting into is the, the friends list. 
I know where every single one of my friends on Facebook is and I can put them into categories depending on, so it's no different than your leads. You should use your personal Facebook as a customer relationship management system. I just want to go back real quick to something that you said that a lot of people think that Facebook leads are going to be instant gratification like Zillow and Realtor.com leads. And I personally feel, obviously they're not for the most part. Once in a while, you'll find a lead on Facebook or a buyer or seller that wants to buy or sell immediately. But what I love about Facebook leads is there's a lot of talk right, right now about companies like Zillow and Realtor are just kind of like push us aside a little bit, right? Like trying to make us a door opener. And the great thing about Facebook buyers and sellers is that they're at the very, usually the very beginning stages of buying or selling and they're very limited in what they, in what they know. And so if you get them at the, at the really beginning stages of the home search process, you have so much time to build that trust, right? So a realtor.com or Zillow lead is going to be like, hey, open this door for me right now. That's all I care about. Whereas a buyer lead on Facebook is going to be like, you know, I'm not sure if I have the right, if, if I'm, my credit is good. I haven't talked to a lender. I'm not sure what I should do about a down payment. And you have an opportunity to educate these people and become their expert and their go-to and their consultant. Yeah, I mean, I, I love that. And the other thing is because it's, you know, you think about the funnel, like top to the bottom, you know, that same Zillow lead, like you said, I mean, they're obviously moving more and more now to, you know, the referral model, uh, you know, really hand handing like sort of that qualified lead up, but they're going to charge a lot more for it now. Whereas you, you know, if you think about it, you got one client out of that at the end. So you pay 35% or whatever it is, you get this one client at the end, the bottom of the funnel. It's a great lead, obviously. But imagine if you had spent that same amount of money at the top of the funnel now you've got like hundreds of leads that say for the same price, you're going to pay for that one bottom of the funnel lead. And if you nurture them, you're going to get the same quality. Like you're going to get all, some of those leads are going to drop off, you know, or like do a deal with you in say a month or three months or whatever it is, or maybe even some of them today, but your database is so much bigger because you were able to go after all those top of funnel leads, nurture them along the way. And so I just think from an ROI standpoint too, it's maybe not as instant gratification, like you said, but, if, but I think in terms of building your brand to last, like building your business to last, do you want to be at the mercy of buying those leads at, you know, those deals right at the last, you know, kind of inning? Or can you nurture your list and build this huge, you build your influence? And then ultimately, even if Facebook changes one day or gets way more expensive or, you know, whatever it is, and you've got like 10, you've got 10 or 20,000 people that you can stay in front of in your community, you know, run ads to just those people or, you know, send emails for free. I think that's the real power of what, you know, Facebook can be. Yeah. I want to add to that, Nick. I think number one, our system is really geared for seller leads. So you got to look at generation Y baby boomers, millennials, 2 billion plus people on Facebook. The fact that you can target these people by the farming area and we've tapped into what we call the macro and micro model. So you can actually target entire counties in the Silicon Valley and so forth. And you actually can find out where the algorithm is that is going to be the lowest cost per lead. And the idea of, of what we've tested is, I don't know what you guys seen out there, but we have a funnel that produces a 65% click to contact ratio. The average lead that we see North America wide produces about a $2.50 lead submission and about a, just a little bit over a $6 email. Or, or that's like all that's the North most America wide. That's, that's San Francisco, million dollar markets. That's just average data. So if I know that I can tap into that model, in some cases, I mean, I, I remember we tapped into one market in Oklahoma, which that was producing like 50 cent emails. So, yeah. so the, the idea is if you can tap into that model and ours is a dynamic lead capture. So, you know, the idea of, branding yourself along the way, but capturing one step at a time. You don't ask for all the information up front, by the way. And the congruency of the ad itself into the lead capture portion of this, all while branding yourself, all while shooting off automations that could be introducing you to the lead, and you can take control of the process. But the idea is if I'm spending 5 or $6 an email, why wouldn't I look at that as digital door knocking in the sense that that person has opened the door to me, I get face-to-face -face with them. I instantly humanize the process. I instantly get the opportunity for them to decide if they would trust me. So this model is for the realtor looking for um, how to be authentic and, and really a, a cutthroat industry, how to be different and unique. Marcus, we, we get a lot of agents who run ads on, on Facebook and we also get a lot of those agents say that the ads that they're running 
aren't producing the results that they want. So can you, can you show us, or do you have an example of ads that, that you see work yeah. or agents that are listening in can say, Oh, got it. It makes sense. Or, or wow, I've never seen it like that. Or at least give us some tips as to how to structure the ad correctly to make them work. Yeah, when you when you share that, when I'll talk a little bit about it while you're finding that. I mean, sounds it's, good. It's it's actually something that you would be shocked to see. I think what a lot of people assume that an ad that you would run would be a, a like if you're going to, to attract a seller would be a home, or or something real estate focused. But we're about to show you um, has changed the game. I think because it's tapping into what's familial. And it's tapped into what's common for people and they do it every day. Yeah. So why, yeah. Don't you, why don't you show them the example yeah. of that? Because it's for me, when you interrupt someone's newsfeed, it's really the call to action, but you, you always are looking to do something that doesn't reek of solicitation, right? Like I'm trying to take your business. It's really the call to, call to action and how you say it and the consistency in from that click into the way you capture their information. And I, I think what you're about to see is the two of those put together it creates incredible results. The synergy between the ad itself, the call to action, and the way you're capturing their information. Because you gotta remember, this is happening on your smartphone. This is not happening on your desktop, right? So we're gonna give you the idea of people are scrolling down their newsfeed. And what's the number say? I mean, we know that it could be sometimes hours a day on Facebook, right? So how do you get in that newsfeed? How do you interrupt their newsfeed? And how do you target that homeowner? So we're gonna about to show you how. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I just want to, as I jump to that, I just want to add kind of two notes to that. So what, maybe for some people, they may not even know what Street Text does. So before I even, before I just get into the product, I'm going to, I'm going to do that right now. Um, what we do is, is that I think the two main problems that real estate agents face, uh, specifically that our problem really solves, is one is, is that it does take time to run ads, right? So, you know, even if, if you're pretty savvy at it, um, and you got a lot of creative ideas, you need to stay on top of those ads. You need to launch them. You, need to, you know, you basically you just got to keep an eye on them. I mean, Facebook's algorithm can change pretty fast. If somebody writes a negative comment, suddenly your lead performance goes down. And if you're not paying attention to that, you know, you can waste a lot of money. I think on that. The other thing is, is that what to run and how to know if my ads, you know, what, ad- what objective to run. Yeah. What objective, but also when it comes to, um, you know, if, you know, if I'm launching an ad, um, and I, I, and I want to see like, am I actually paying the lowest cost per lead or could I be paying less? How do I know that? How do I really measure that? And Facebook's got some great stuff in there. I mean, obviously you can, you know, you, you use the pixel, you leverage that, you know, you take a look at what you're paying per lead, but then you, it, it can be sometimes difficult to test all those areas. So we're going to show you some really cool examples too on how you can literally, like the whole thing is how you can become a lead generating machine in 30 minutes. If you're using the platform, you could launch in 30 minutes. You, I don't even know how many ads you can launch. So we're going to show you too. Like I have an example that we're going to share with you of a gal that I ran about seven ads overnight with in all different areas of the Bay Area. And the example is she spent about like no more than $15 on each ad, in some cases less than $6. So if you become somewhat of uh, an aggressive tester, you can find out with less than $10 spent on particular ad campaigns, whether or not that's going to be successful or not. You don't have to waste a lot of time or ad budget to figure it out. So we're going to do Let's see. I'm excited. Yeah. So I, I have Donna's permission to share this. Um, you know, one, one of the things we'll probably do is we'll talk a little bit about her and some of her strategies and the things that she does and how she leverages the product. Yeah. Well, Donna, really quickly. So Donna Swansea has done over 120 transactions since starting with street text two and a half years ago. Yeah. And she, you know, and I think the thing, they're all street text and Facebook. Yeah. All Facebook leads, all listings too. Mm -hmm. She doesn't do buyers, just sellers. And the reason we wanted to show Donna too is, is there's actually a lot of different ad formats and things that you can run. And yet Donna seems to stay often with the same one. So she's a great example. Um, I, there's a couple of things that she does really well. We'll dive all into them, but you know, if we can get one thing across in this webinar, like just one thing product aside, like, you know, the product's going to do what it's supposed to do and it's going to be great is Mm -hmm. that every one of these leads that comes in, it's a real person on the other end. Like they saw your ad on Facebook, they came into the system. So how, and I mean, we realize that, you know, leads can be difficult to work with, but if you, if you can grasp that they're a real person on the other end and you've got some really good techniques of starting that conversation, staying in touch like Donna does, it's amazing what it can do for your business. Let me add that on that. The, the, the key is every, everybody, like you want to become a lead generation machine in 30 minutes, but what I can, we can generate you leads all day. If you can't start a conversation with those leads, what does that even matter? Right? So it, it's less about generating 
I think as much quantity as leads as possible and more about looking at every single lead as an opportunity to get face to face with. And you have to embrace that, including the partial leads, including the address only leads. And we teach a model that shows you how to actually pull up tax records, go and search for them on Facebook, see that person, drop them a friend request, drop them into a list, call it address only leads, right? Cause you know, if you drop them into that list, by the way, and this is bigger picture stuff, they'll always stay in that list. So you'll always be able to, to see that list even if they don't accept your friend request. And then you should also send a message because now you've created a system where you can track back to and go back to the last conversation we had. So let's, uh, so let's jump into this a little bit. Now, one of the things you're gonna see, now some of you have been like, oh, I've seen lots of home, find your home value ads. And we have other ads too, this isn't the only one. But the reason that I like to pick this one with Donna is that sometimes it's not so much about what the ad creative says, although it does matter, and we always test the creative and we find good creative, but it's how you run the ad on Facebook and how you target it and how you test to make sure that it's actually it's performing well on Facebook that matters more than anything else. So in other words, if you can find a good you know, match between copy, like what's written on the ad, the image, uh, the call to action, the entire process from starting a text conversation and email conversation with your lead, if you can find all that and it's working, you know, I think a lot of agents sometimes throw that out the window if they see their performance drop. Like if the performance starts to drop, say, after three or four weeks, they go, okay, this isn't working anymore. I need a new ad creative. I need a new angle where, yeah, you may need a new angle or maybe you need another retargeting angle, which we can talk about or something else. But actually that ad and that entire process might still work really well. You just may need to retap into Facebook again. And so when you take a look at this, this is, I just want to share a couple things here with what, how Donna runs it. So on our back end system, when you see any of our ad formats, so you can see a whole bunch of different ads here. Whenever you launch one of these, the agent can see sort of the, you know, the, the North American statistics behind every ad. And even a boring ad like this, this is one of the things I showed to, uh, when I say boring, I just mean traditional, like what's your home worth, you know, what may, you know, et cetera, et cetera. A couple of things I really want to point out. So this exact ad here, we've actually split it into three different objectives. So okay. you can see here, this is a page post ad. This is the conversion ad and this is like a traffic ad. These are different objectives. If you're in ad manager and you're starting a brand new ad, you get different objectives, right? And okay. you probably heard a lot of times Facebook said, Hey, make sure you're running conversion ads, leverage the pixel. You're going to get a better, you're going to get a better cost per lead. Mm -hmm. And so what we always try to do with all of our ad formats is we actually want to test that and prove it. And Facebook is right. And this is a good way of backing it up. So you can see if you run this ad here, but if you run a page post objective, about 28% of people become a lead. Whereas if you're running the conversion one, actually about 64% of all of your traffic are going to become a lead, which is awesome. And if you take a look at traffic, about 30%. And I know you guys have got lots of Facebook experts out there. Um, and I'm sure they'll be able to back that up too when it comes to the conversion side. And I mean, we do have so, like, let, yeah. let me just ask you a quick question, right? So for those of us out there who are Facebook illiterate, which most people are, um, talk to me about what a page post looks like. Is there just no call, no call to action essentially? Oh, great question. Sorry. Uh, all of these ads would look the same to the consumer. That's what's crazy. So when the actual consumer's scrolling down, they're going to see a sponsored by, you know, let's just say Nick oh, or business sure. page. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. An example that would be, well, I'll just have to flip the share screen. I'll go to that. It's a, a page post, like not a dark ad, not a sponsored post or well, no, every one of these ads still creates a dark post in the sense that it's still creating a page post, but the, there's actually, a, there's a Facebook objective. Like when you're running an ad, you can run a lead ad, you know, you can run a, a, a okay, lead So ad that's post. not a lead ad. These are just different objectives. No. So because the objective matters in Facebook's algorithm as well as the targeting and everything else. So even though the targeting and all these ads would be the same, mm. uh, and it would, and the creative, the image would seemingly be the same and the creative would be the same in the sense of like what it's saying, even if you're launching three areas, the objective that you pick matters as well. And all we're really trying to show you here is, is that we just really made it easy so that we rank these. So when you take a look at it, if you're going to run this particular ad creative, use this objective with that creative because you're going to get a better result. Okay. And well, you can start, you can see there's almost 3000 people actively using it. Yeah. So who, who's creating the, the ad copy? We do. So what we do is we have a library of different ad formats oh, and templates awesome. that we have basically have been able to find work well. Then what you can do is like, let's say you wanted to run this one, for example, and you click select, you basically, don't worry about that step, that won't show up for you guys, but you basically would just come in here, choose a targeting location. So let's just say I wanted to do so I wanted to, yeah, San Francisco or whatever it would be. I got my daily budget, I got my business page there. 
I'm either going to be uploading my own image or picking from stock or whatever it may be. And okay. literally, I hit launch. This ad gets created using all of the objective. We add in a bunch of our own targeting, mixing San Francisco to make sure we're getting a good lead. We're going to be leveraging the pixel in there to make sure that we're always optimizing to find the right leads. Okay. The emails get built out. All the text messages get built out. Everything. So I'm not going to do it because I'm actually in a live account here. Well, on Ghana, I mean, here, here's the beauty behind that too. You can drop a pin. You can target zip codes. You can target San Francisco. Like even for our seller conversion template that produces that high click to contact ratio, there's three different ways to target that area. There's also three different ways to launch the image itself. And we have a satellite variation. <laughs> almost makes like this 3D if like if there's any hilly or mountainous areas, it almost looks it makes it look 3D. And we have the generic map image, all of which can tap into Facebook's algorithm differently. Sure. The idea of split testing side by side and letting the best man win is one of the most important thing you can do because it could be difference between a cost per lead of six bucks and a cost per lead of a dollar. So, so question. So, um, so you're okay. So you're targeting locations. You can drop a pin and then who, how else can you target with this? You want to target homeowners or what's, well, I mean, I mean, I'm sure you guys know too. Uh, obviously, Facebook's made a lot of changes in 2019, uh, a lot of changes in 2018. So we basically have found that you know we include everything that we can to help target that. We really leverage Facebook's pixel a lot too going forward, and we actually are starting now to send data back on the lead. So, for instance, um, one of our big rollouts this next quarter will be when our agents. Uh, signal that, hey, I got a listing from this lead or I got a deal, like a conversion from this lead. We're sending all that data back to Facebook too so we just continually re-optimize the pixel to find the right people. But I mean, we're, gonna, we're even gonna lose zip codes. Like you guys know, in September of later this year, I'm sure, um, zip code targeting for a lot of real estate agents is gonna be gone just because it's part of um, the housing side. So employment, housing, and credit. And we're not worried at all when it comes to that. In fact, I would say a lot of the ads that we run today, we don't even worry about zip codes anymore. So, I mean, we can cover more of that in detail. Because you can target specific places and Facebook registers almost everywhere. So, but Steve, I mean, yeah. uh, Marcus, there's a couple of questions in the audience. One is by Nadia. Uh, she's asking, uh, is it created for, is, do, when you create these ads, you create them through Ads Manager, right? Obviously, you do through their personal ads manager, not yours, right? That's right. So great, great question. So when I hit launch here, this is going to build everything on Donna's own ad account. Awesome. And if you've, if, if you've ever built an ad before, um, it can take a little bit to build it. And literally, I was just showing you there, I built the entire ad in probably like you know 20 seconds. And if I hit launch, yes, it'll build on her ad manager. But the really, really cool thing too is it's all transparent. So, Natty, if you want to go in and, and, you know, be in control of it from the ad manager side, you could. But you don't even need to because you can control it from it's our side. It's way easier to navigate and look at this way. Well, once you get used to it. And I think the, the really cool thing, too, is like, um, is, but, but just from the transparency standpoint, nothing's behind a closed door. We actually, we don't consider ourselves a lead gen provider. You know, in other words, you don't come to us. You don't buy leads from us. There's no, we don't run it under another brand and just send you leads and then you try to convert them. It's completely the opposite. This is actually a tool for you to then be able to generate your own leads with proven campaigns. You can customize the text messages, you can customize the emails, which we can show you in a moment, but we've, we pre-templated them out because we know they work and we know they convert. And then you can put your fingerprints all over it and make it your own. But we, we, we just want to be able to speed up the time that you can run campaigns. We want to make sure it's fully transparent and your brand is front and center always. And then we keep training you on how to lower your cost per lead and we're going to dive into some cool examples. But the other thing we do is that when your ad is running, this is a big challenge for agents. Is like, take a look at this for example. Here's Donna. She's spending about eighteen dollars a day on this ad here. She can track sort of her lifetime stats on this ad, as well as how it's trending for the last seven days, with the things that matter to her most. Like right now, she really cares how much is she paying per email, and what is how is that trending over the last seven days, right? So she'll keep an eye on that. But the other thing is when you take a look at the recommendations. We keep an eye on that right now as well. So relevancy, the only reason you see a relevancy score of zero is Facebook just deprecated that. Yep. So they give us three new metrics that we're going to be putting into the system. But we have an algorithm running behind the scenes, our own AI. And it's essentially taking a look. Like I'll show you another one. Um, probably another one that you'll have. I'm where why you're looking through that. So when somebody, when somebody um, opts into the ad, 
uh, what what happens? It, it, it's a, is it a messenger call to action, or is it a form that they fill out? Because then you said that you kind of start oh, yeah. talking to them. So let's let's go through it. Let's go through an actual ad. Uh, so I'm just going to share a different. Uh, give me a second here. Um, uh, it should be this one here. So I show this. Okay. So let's just pick one of Donna's ads. You guys can see this here. See the screen. Yep. Yep. Okay. Oh, I got these messages open. Okay, let's close all this up. Okay, so here would be an ad. I mean, there's obviously we have a whole library of different ads. The reason I like to show this one though is because it almost gets the most negative press in a sense because it's like, oh, I've seen these ads before. And our whole thing is, is that while even if you've seen the ad, it's still one of the best performing ads in our library and we always are testing new campaigns. But I think one of the things that Donna does so well too is like take a look at her comments. Like she's there's a lot. I mean, there's a huge amount of engagement there. Yeah, wow. and all of her ads are like that. Any ad that Donna runs, she works hard at getting engagement and having a conversation. And we in our inside a group, I, I actually was just following a conversation yesterday where somebody was complaining about like they were getting negative. Uh, and it is hard. Sometimes you get really negative comments on your ads. Oh, yeah. I mean, you always do. You always you do. You always you count with kindness. And here's the thing. What Donna's doing is she's creating organic relevancy as well. So we teach the whole concept and she actually teaches this herself that you should be actually sharing this ad back to your personal Facebook as well and running a contest behind it. And we talk about you run that 72 hour contest where you draw them into a Facebook live and you, you know, announce a 25 gift certificate to a local restaurant. But the idea of you get them to like, share and comment on as well and your personal network only enhances the relevancy, drives down your cost per click and your cost per lead. So when you take a look at this, obviously right now I'm just bringing up the ad, but this would be in someone's news feed like usual. So if, if you are brand new to Facebook, I'm sure you've seen where it says sponsored by, in this case it would say sponsored by the business page, and then here's gonna be her ad, and she's gonna go ahead. And then the user in that moment, maybe subconsciously, you know, at the end of the day, everybody's on Facebook. They may not, they're obviously not there to buy and sell homes per se. They're there to communicate with their friends and family, but they see something of interest, they click on it, and I'll just kind of run you through. Usually it's they want to find the value of their home, right? Yeah. They, may, they may be interested in selling and you'll find out, but that is all about how you're able to uncover that. And that's why you need that face-to-face -face model. So the reason I'm shrinking it down is like 99% of our users are coming through mobile. Again, so there's lots of formats. There's lots of different landing pages. There's lots of different language and ad formats. So don't get hung up on just this, this one, but it actually, it's a great ad still. So we just want to run you through it. You know, they're going to go ahead. They're going to land on the landing page. The landing page that they come to, right? Okay, yeah. got it. Okay. They're gonna go through it, um, which again, isn't necessarily rocket science. Like, you know, they're gonna enter their address, you know, they're gonna continue through, they're gonna provide their email. Um, but what happened, it, the, I think the real key is when I show you how we test all this. So, well, let's just stop right there because all of a sudden, as the address is submitted, it's automatically goes into the Street Text dashboard. Now, at that moment, we ask them for the email, we have them click on a box that says permission to be contacted by email. So that's where you're kind of weeding out the people, right? If they're not willing to give you permission, then obviously it'll move to this portion of the funnel. Okay. Got it. Yeah. And as they continue, obviously we ask some questions. The, the questions that we've, you know, I mean, they're good questions. They're fine questions. The real strategy is how you bring this to get face to face with this leader. That's I think what we're going to So the, the key on that concept, and you could even go back to at, automatically as the email is submitted, the automation fires, right? So, in that okay, so when they, okay, so when they submit their email, they get an email. If they submit their phone number, they'll get yeah. a text. Yes, and we'll show you an example of what we want our agents to have embedded in that auto email because that is the opportunity to have a video firing off, introducing yourself and communicating how that person is going to get the home value they requested. Yeah, and so, you know, obviously some people do set appointments right from within here as they, they're going through the funnel, but we know that at the end of the day, everybody, for the most part, the leads are just, you know, like you said, Nick, earlier in the conversation, the top of funnel leads, they're coming in, we have an opportunity now to get value to them and build value with them. Yeah, and what also is happening, guys, too, is in the stage of the funnel where we ask for the phone number, we get a chance to pull in their Facebook reviews if they have any, and that increases the submission of the phone numbers. Also, there's an SMS component firing out from Street Text, which is just as powerful because within three minutes, that lead will get a text message from who we call Julie. And Julie actually acts, she acts as their assistant. And so they, that lead automatically thinks they're talking to a team. You know, hey, this is Julie on behalf of Tristan, right? And we have a, a script that actually compels them to, to actually start talking about their home. And we have so many great scripts that actually will 
give them an option of getting guesstimate or a complimentary 20 minute walkthrough of the home. And <laughs> you'd be surprised. I mean, that they will choose for the 20 minute complimentary walkthrough, especially if it's a better opportunity to get an exact market value. Yeah, so I mean, you know, Marcus, like, we're gonna be, I'm He's, almost- Tristan, you're, you're uh, muted, Tristan. Oh, you're muted. I'm almost nervous that we're moving too fast. Like, I, I, I just break yeah. it down. Let's slow it down. There are three questions. I don't want to miss them. There's some good ones. Okay. Um, okay. When you showed the screen where you posted the value, uh, the value ad for Donna, and she had what eighty nine comments, and yeah. she was going back and forth with them. That was her responding to them, right? That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Okay. But that was one question. People wanted to make sure if it was actually her or a bot. Then the other question is when people inquire on let's say four or five different ads that you're running and an email is then given to to us through those ads do we know what ad they're responding through what email it's coming through on that's right yeah you're going to know that and you'll know based on the text message as well if they obviously come the whole way through on that Perfect. and, so, and, and <clears throat> any other questions on that so yeah so donna is personally responding i think one thing that we, again i'm just kind of bringing it back to this uh you know, in kind of who this is for. We've just found that there's so many good systems out there that can obviously help an agent with the process. Cause you know, there's a lot, an agent has to wear a lot of hats, right? They got to do a lot of things. The one thing that we can't ever remove though, uh, or I don't think is really a good idea to remove is that that human connection. So I think we're, the reason Donna's done so well, she's got the system doing a bunch of the heavy lifting as much as she can. But you'll see in a minute, like she's sending out a great video introduction at the beginning. She is managing those comments manually by herself. You know, she is getting a home value in every yeah. single person's hand. And, and so I think the thing is that, you know, you got to leverage the system where it can do its part, but it can never replace the agent. And I would actually say that, you know, I think as we separate in the next few years with real estate, like they will, there's going to be obviously a lot of technology is going to do that through Zillow, you know, Zillow and whatnot. They're going to do their, they're going to have their angle on that. But we really feel for the real estate agent that like is relationship focused and, and really just wants to be above all of that as they go forward. Don't find systems that remove that human element. Like yeah, wherever it's like, we love bomb bomb. Like we really encourage bomb bomb in our platform, like leveraging the video, like getting face to face as quick as you can, you know, adding the value, driving them back to Facebook. It, um, all of our retargeting ads include market updates, like, you know, your face, your video. Um, and so I don't want to move too fast. I just want to make sure we, we hit on that because one more, one more question then in the regards to that. So let's say you want to upload a custom audience and have a specific message to them. Do we just send that over to you and you guys deliver that message only to our audience? Yeah, it will. So we have the retargeting right now is in our beta version. So I can't actually show it to you here. And basically what it does is it controls you. When, when your leads come in, you can tag them as say home seller, home seller, home seller, or you can tag them kind of like a, like any mail chimp list or anything that you can tag your list based on where they've come through or, or based on a tag. And then when you run the retargeting ads, you just select the audience that you wanted to show to, and then it's going to show up to those people going forward. You guys, it's, it's all about authenticity, right? It's the key is, we all know we're being solicited thousands of times a day subconsciously. So what's going to make you unique and different? It's not, you do not want to give them an opportunity to think that you're just a suit trying to get their business. So the, the key element of this is you can tap into the algorithm of Facebook and get a lot of leads. You can build an incredible database, but that doesn't mean anything unless you can have a conversation with those people. Mm -hmm. so Very true. You have to be able to look at this as, if I'm going to get some, uh, it's really digital door knocking. If I'm going to get them to open the door to their home, wouldn't I not be face to face with them? Or would I expect that to drop a letter on their doorstep and for them to open that letter and interpret that? We, we know that body language and tonality is 95% of communication, maybe more. You do not want to rely on HTML or text to get a conversation. Yes. The speed delete component works, but even in the speed delete component, you could have a video sending out if you wanted to. So I just want to share, like, ultimately, the only way you can make this work, I find, in terms of, you know, exponentially growing your business is look at every single lead that comes in as an opportunity to build a, a relationship with and have a conversation with and then be persistent in that pursuit. Don't think it's just going to happen for the first time. you got to constantly be reinforcing that idea and every thing that you do ongoing in terms of nurturing that relationship has to be focused on getting face to face. 
Got it. All right. Another question from the audience. Joseph Rio says, how many, uh, in, in quotations, people reached per day uh, would you say is a good number? Uh, we, we start every ad at $9 a day because we benchmarked it across 55,000 ads. That generally gets you in front of 500 people, give or take, depending on. So I would say it all depends on what your ad budget is. Try the $9 a day ad spend. That's what we actually ask and recommend people to do. And that could get you anywhere between 500 and 1,000 people. Well, here's, here's actually, I think, let's share this then. This is a great example. So I just got this is, as some quick slides. I just pulled this on what's count here. So when you take a look at this, all of these ads I'm about to show you, the next four ads, ran at exactly the same time. You can see this one spent $14 and got nothing. No performance at all. Fair up. So immediately shut that ad off. This is the whole idea with, our, with the platform is, is that you want to ideally launch uh, multiple ads over a 24-hour period. You can see the next ad that we ran over that period. Hey, we got, you know, we got three leads. We're paying about 480 a lead now out of Walnut Creek. You know, this ad took us all of two seconds, like, you know, 20 seconds to launch as well because we were launching them at the same time. So one, two, three, You can see four. a great relevancy building on that, right? A relevancy of a, the, the CPC for you guys is cost per click. The CPM is cost per 1,000 impressions, just so you guys know what these numbers mean. Um, the relevancy is a score out of 10 that Facebook gives that ad. The reach obviously makes, you know, how many people have been reached. The clicks that came out of it. The spend and then the leads, we're, we're talking about cost per submission and then the emails generating into a cost per email. That's right. So I think, the, so I got a couple more slides here to show you as well really quick. And the reason I, I, I'm doing these ones is that we launch all four of these ads at the same time. So then the next one you can see, you know, in Sacramento here. A little bit di different variation. The last one was a, a terrain image. This one was a satellite image. Now we, you know, in that same period of time on $14, we reached about a thousand people. We at minimum, before our odometer even kicks in to start measuring ads performance, we need that minimum 500 impressions for the ad to start actually, you know, that's what Facebook does at the beginning, just to make sure that the ad's actually going to perform. They always sort of throttle the ad at the beginning. Once they get those first 500 impressions, they open it up. But then the next ad, you can see here, even less people we reach, but now we're paying, I think that mm -hmm. was, oh, and this was the best one. So. 290. So this was the ad ultimately that was the winner. Actually, well, look at that. Look at the San Francisco one. Do you guys pick, does the system pick the ad on its own and says, okay, I'm shutting the other two off or do we have to keep an eye on it? No, you? you're going to go in there and manually turn it off. Yeah. So, so if I screw up for like four days and I'm like not paying you, attention. You wouldn't be. You wouldn't oh. be. You wouldn't be paying, paying attention because I tell everybody when they launch ads overnight, wake up in the morning and start eliminating the losers. Like the idea, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be somebody would forget about that because you know if you're spending six you're going six different ads all spending at 10 bucks a day why not visit that ad tomorrow when you've only spent about five bucks yeah what? i don't want to right. yeah, yeah. otherwise they would keep going but, but there is one other thing our odometer will watch for performance too so it's not showing up right now because this is just this is and you'll know because you're getting notifications as these leads are coming in so yeah, it's not yeah. like you're you're going to be like going 24 48 hours and you're like well where's my leads leads you'll be reminded every time a lead's coming in yeah, we, Tristan, that's a great question because actually after 24 hours, our system then sends you a performance email on that ad too. So uh, we are going to let you know if it's not performing well. So you would still have to go in manually and turn it off, but at least it's notifying you. I mean, otherwise it would be a disaster. Yeah, you'd be running ads and then just keep running. And I mean, look at San Francisco though, though right? If you're spending three bucks and 52 cents an email in a million dollar market like San Fran, right? I mean, dude, I want to make sure that that person when they open their email is meeting me because instantly they're going to make that observation of they like me. Right. And you got to use that mm. model. You got to come across as authentic and we teach you how to do it because some people are like, Oh, I'm scared to be on video. Well, you know what? Get over it because at the end of the day, you're going to have to get in front of that person anyways. So let's work on that together. Let's coach you through that because it's really just your authentic self. And that's the key is you have to be authentic and genuine so about giving first. I got you. Yeah, I agree with you. So t just take me through the process, um, either Steven or Marcus. When somebody clicks on one of these ads and they go through that whole process, the lead is the lead texted to me? Is it emailed to me? What, what happens? Yeah, so your, your email will, uh, the lead will be emailed to you. And the lead is only texted to you when they respond. So for instance, if I go into say uh, some of Donna's text messages here. So, um, you know, it's basically she's firing out this. Oh, this hey, so, hey, this is Julie. I work with Donna Swansea, right? So they think they're talking to Julie. 
I see you're interested in your home value. Is there anything specific about your home that may affect its value, i.e. updates? That's happening three minutes as they put on their phone number. They get that from Julie, which is a local number they have chosen that, let's say, you know, their local number was 408. They chose Julie to have a local number of 408 as well. So they think that they're actually getting a text message from Julie, the assistant of Donna. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's just it's just the the, the bot in the but back. But you there. come in and reply as Julie because in many ways, and we teach scripts how to use Julie. We we'll, we'll show you how to actually take that. We have a a script we're going to give you guys today that shows you how to take that into a walkthrough of the home. So in this so in this case, the you know the lead responds, and the moment they respond, obviously you'd get the text notification on your phone, so you know who this lead is, you know what they came through, and they've responded. And so what Donna does in her process is she just always continues the conversation on her phone. So she just basically says, oh, hey, Julie, let me know um, that you know, your home's got is in good shape. It's got 20 by 20. When's a good time for me to stop by or, or whatnot? We, and Marcus was saying that a lot of our other agents, what they do is they actually log into Street Text here and they continue the conversation on the bottom here as their assistant just to, just to book the appointment. Now we send multiple messages to the lead. So the moment they respond, our automation kicks off and now it's basically you're on it. But if they don't respond to the first one, they're going to get another one. They're going to get another one. And we have a, we have about a 30 day period where we're just casually checking in just to see if they're still interested on the tech side. But you know, most of our responses are coming in that first three messages really um, to get a response started. So, and the, the, the question is, did Donna personally respond to each comment on the ad? She does yeah. personally respond, but the key is once the automation, like the Julie is texting these leads, once the lead responds, the automation stops and Donna kicks in. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So this is continued with your guys' question because you're probably following. So what's next on your, what would you like to see next? Well, I want to know, since a lot of people that are listening in are also wondering, well, you know, do, let's say I, I don't want to go with street text, right? but let's say I want to create my own ad. What would you say they need to do to create an ad that that can also provide as much as uh, results as one of your awesome ads? Like what should they do? How do you build a simple ad? Yeah. I mean, I mean, you can, you could come in and you can reverse engineer the ads per se. Um, and like, what does it take to run a great ad? Okay. Well, the, the challenge a little bit is just that there's so much of our systems doing from the heavy lifting side. I would say that the number one thing is the testing. So what's an example? Like, let me just even go, go to your ahead. funnels, go to the funnels. I mean, you can see yeah. there's some great numbers on I those just, ads that are not working well versus ads that are working well. And I think there's so much time consumption for somebody. No, no one wants to be an ad expert or market marketing all day. They're, they're all about like in real estate. You're all about going, getting relationships. So yeah. why? spend so much time trying to figure that out unless that was your full-time job. Here's a great example. And maybe this is just another view of looking at, I was showing you all those ad metrics and, and there's a lot in there. So here's just another yeah. view. And I guess what I mean by that is that when Donna's launching these ads, you can see in this case, she loves a specific, she's got a sell equity format she likes of ours and she's got the property valuation format. So she kind of runs those two consistently. And the areas that she's targeting are basically identical the whole time. So I think that if you're going to run your own ads, um, leverage good content. You can, you can come and you can take all the street tech content. You can take the images, you can take the copy, you can take all of that. But if you really want to do it well, make sure that you run that ad multiple times in the same market. Cause you can see, um, you know, and you obviously want to have the pixel and stuff put in, but like here, this is the seller equity ads, uh, seller equity ads, same objective, same everything else. It is targeting a little bit of a different area. This was outside of Fort, Fort Worth but very different results. In one case, she's paying 16 bucks a lead, hence the ad is paused. She's not gonna continue that one. Here, mm-hmm. she's happy with this one, maybe this market, whatever those what these homes are worth to her, she's happy with this one at six bucks an email right now. And she's spending like $15 a day and she's keeping this one running. The thing is, it's the speed at which she can deploy. Like Donna deploys like tons, like I guess I got these ones right here. So she deploys a bunch of different ads and she's always testing them and relaunching them. And so I think the key really is, is is the speed you don't, I guess just don't make your decision on one ad. Like something that Marcus always says is that Facebook, if you've got the humanized process, right. And you really believe that it can grow your business. It's never a matter of if it's always a matter of when. So you just yeah. want, you want to just keep trying. Let me add to that. Too. It's she, Donna can spend 50, $60 a day on Facebook because she's mastered her process, right? 
don't come into street text or even generating, trying to generate leads on Facebook and try to go for the quantity without having your process set. If you don't focus on getting your automation set and getting video embedded, thinking about what you're going to do with every single lead, then why, why, why generate 20 leads a day? If you can't touch on those leads appropriately, spend yeah. less time on the quantity and more time on the quality of your process. And that's the key. We, we are most passionate about giving people a solution. The tool itself is running the ads. The tool itself is, you know, only as good as your ability to, to invest and learn how to use it. And that, I think that's the key with us. We do training every single day. We have weekly masterminds. We love what we do because we passionately believe that it's all about being authentic and serving every single lead and looking at them as somebody who may not be ready yet. And even no is not yet. The idea is, well, how do I get this person to, to know and like me? And how do I create influence with every single person in my farming area? Because if I give every single lead a positive experience, maybe they're not ready to sell with me, but I guarantee you that experience is going to translate into a referral. So Marcus, where do I sign up? <laughs> so, I, mean, I, just had, I just had Sean Carson say, um, what did he say here? He goes, this is the reason I chose street techs. They've monitored over 3 million in Facebook ad spend to see what works. They have the formula from their funnel ads. I have run ads and no traction in six weeks. I had 250 leads spending $9 a day. That's awesome. insane. And he's in Vancouver. And that's a that's a tough market in itself, right? That's a million. So if I go into Vancouver, can I just copy everything Sean's doing? <laughs> you would, but you know what? I think this is the this is the, this is the tricky part. Is um, and it, like yeah, I mean, a lot of agents run ads, and they they always come to us and they say, "Well, I didn't get any results, or I had some results." And I think that because we did it almost as an agency at the beginning, and then we built our platform around it. We knew that we needed to be able to redeploy these ads really quickly. We needed to be able to test them against each other really quickly to know which ad was work, is working the best. And that's sort of how we designed the system. So I think if you, you know, for an agent that's so dead set on running their own ads, which is totally fine, I get it. If you want to do it, you should almost still do a street text trial, launch a bunch of different ads, yeah. see if you can get, and then try to beat that. Like whatever, whatever our best performance is, if you keep running the ads, you could try to beat it on your own. But I think what you'll find like Sean is, is that at the end of the day, you can do it faster and more effectively using the street tech system. Plus all the data is going back and forth to make sure that we're always re-optimizing, um, you know, the right leads coming through. Um, and not, not to discourage you from running your own ads. Like you should, you should always run your own ads, I guess. But I want to say who this is not for guys. Cause I think that's important. You guys have incredible influence over a large amount of people. This is not for the transaction focused guy. This is for the relationship focused guy because the, the, where I see people turn over is when they think they're, they're meant to be getting a lot of listing appointments and a lot of listings early on in the process. But top mm -hmm. of funnel marketing and Facebook is really for somebody who's invested in the relationship, invested in giving of their time, invested in giving value first and serving their clients. And really, most importantly, continuing to serve their, client, their clients and create influence with their clients. So it's a lot of people are not wanting to do that. They're just wanting the deal today. And I understand and you get some of those deals that come in, but Donna, for example, didn't build her business overnight. She started at the $9 a day ad spend, got a couple of deals within the first few months and six months it went up to 10 in a year. She had 44 and in two and a half years now she's has 120 deals that came or, from street text. More but, enough, think yeah. of, but multiple of those clients have done three transactions from her since the beginning. So it's the idea of every single person you're going to get such great value to you. And she gets repeat and referral, referral business all the time. You, there won't be a faster way for you to grow a seller database than utilizing street text. But the, the key concept is now we have to work with you and train you on how to nurture these leads properly using automations, right? And systems and your so, CRM and things like that. Make sure. So for those agents that have a business page, you should use theirs. If they don't have a business page, do you create one for them? No, it's easy though. We can send them an article. They can do it in two minutes. <laughs> yeah, they really, we really want them to be leveraging their own brand and building their own brand. Um, I do know that there are lots of lead gen companies out there that run unbranded uh, business pages because they get better lead flow out of that. And I get the concept, you know, if a, if the home seller or lead doesn't, but doesn't know who the brand is, maybe they think it's something else and they come in a little cheaper and I get it. But I, I think for the model that we really believe in for our agents is build your brand, 
you know, you're going to get the leads, but you're also going to get the impressions. You're, you're, it's like your your living billboard on Facebook. Grow can, your brand. Can you show them just an example of what I want to see on a video follow-up? Can you show Marley's example, just because I love it so much, how it ties it back into the the one-on-one -on -one connection and really humanizing the process. And so if you go and you, I think you have it in there. Yeah, that's while, you're looking, while you're looking it up, um, do you guys recommend that we run these these ads through through a personal business page, like it would be like Nick Baldwin business page, or should it be like his team name? Uh, Superior is it Superior Homes, Nick? Is that what it is? So that's a good question. I would say if you are personally touching on them and you're going to be creating influence in their lives, then it's Nick Baldwin. If it's a team, then you go with your team page. It all depends on who on the other end, like Marley, for example. If you look at Marley right now, I would want Marley to run her business page as Marley because when they get this video and it points back to her personal Facebook, you'll see the, the, the connection. It depends on who is going to be serving that person on the other end. So, so yeah. we've been these scripts you guys can all get, like we have a little download for you at the end if you want, you can get these scripts. But I think what Marcus wants to just play this really quick so you get an idea. This is what the lead gets as soon as they come to submit their email. Hi, it's Marley. Just letting you know that I attached the internet-based home evaluation that I said I was going to send. Um, if you want a more accurate or custom one, of course, that will take just about 15 minutes to walk through your property. I'll even bring my favorite cupcakes for you to try. So if that's something you're interested in, just go ahead and let me know what time works for you. And that's actually the personal follow-up. I wanted them to see the automation. That there's a there's a separate connection. When they come in, the automation's firing. This would be her personal follow-up to the automation. So this is actually her second touch. Well, I can even show just Don is right here. Like this is Don is one as soon as people come through. Uh, yeah, and this is funny, guys. The, the, the best part about this. Hey there, it's Thomas we'll Swanson with Century 21 Judge Five. And I just wanted to let you know that I got your request for your home value, and I am working on that now. If there's anything that you think I need to know specifically about your home uh, that may increase the value, please just respond to this email and let me know. Um, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Hey, how, how much more raw and relatable can that be? You have a, a lamp in your closet, right? I mean, it's not like she had. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the, the point is it doesn't have to be perfect, right? It's no, just, it's, it's relatable, guys. We want just to truly connect with them. That's it's so positive. true. Yeah, yeah. And Donna I'm has glad been you brought that up, Marcus, and not me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, she's done so well with this video. You know, like, she makes fun of herself all the time, but it, it's, it's good. she's never derailed from a process. The beat behind that, she's got two videos, one for follow-up, one for the automation. Two videos she's created the entire time she's been doing this. She doesn't do the personal follow-up because she has it already in her bomb bomb right in, in, the, in the either Outlook or, or the Gmail, and it just fires off. She's already counted, you know, snippets for the bomb bomb portion. You don't have to recreate videos every time or even scripts. You can have things preloaded. So it just saves you time. And that's the key. You, you know, you systemize this to on a scalable level. So you Perfect. can click. All right, guys. Well, we got a few minutes. Anything you want to end with like a, a link for people to visit? I, I already put up streettext.com unless it was a different link yeah, I mean, you want me to share. This is a link. I mean, we can share right now. If you guys just wanted some of the scripts, like these are, it's just little bonus ones, but th this is a script that got Jessica five listings during her street takes trial. So the first seven days. So it's not to say you can't get listings in the first seven days. We, and if you do it really well, you probably can. We just never want to set those expectations. The expectations really in the first seven days, it's just to find an ad that's really working well for you. Find out if it's even a system that you enjoy working. And if you do, Hey, maybe you're a fit and you'll continue. If not totally understand, but if you want a great script to get the most out of your seven days, uh, there's this one, this is like the text, assistant script um, everybody gets a free number even when they're trials so they can text all their leads automatically this is a great script if you want to um, I love the Zulia one because yeah. it, it combines the idea of Trulia thinks your home is worth something Zillow thinks your worst home something you know Redhead <laughs> thinks your home is worth something the, the internet has no idea what your home is worth let's you know <laughs> let's get you a, a 20 minute walkthrough and find out the exact market. So that's a great script. It works really well as well. So, you know, the, we got these for you. So here's the link. I mean, I just kind of post it. I don't know if I can post if you it. You put it in the chat feature. There. Yeah. I'll just, uh, Perfect. I just threw it on there too, guys. Oh, cool. Okay, good. Yeah. So if you, if you want that, um, you know, feel free. That's just, you know, a little gift for you guys coming through or listening to us today. I, I'm trying to think what we lead with. I, I end with Facebook. It isn't, I, I'm trying to think like, 
it's really, it's really about bringing the conversation back to Facebook. Just use all of the ad tools and everything else to meet new people in your community. Otherwise, wouldn't have met. Build up your database and then just humanize that process as fast as you can. Those who embrace this model today and start investing in this model are going to be the biggest winners five to ten years from now. Okay, so I agree with you 100% in the sense that like, you know, everyone's out there complaining about Zillow and Realtor.com, but they're not doing anything about it, right? They're, they're putting all their money into, they're still putting all their money into it, right? Like $200, $300 a lead. Uh, you know, we're generating leads for, for, you know, six, seven, eight bucks that are closing and commissions of like, you know, six, seven, eight thousand. So, you know, just decide where you want to put your money, decide how bad, how big you want to scale, how quickly you want to scale. Because you cannot scale effectively with Realtor.com and Zillow leads, you just can't. But you can you can scale effectively with Facebook leads at, at five to nine bucks. I mean, it, it's just there's it's a no-brainer, really. It is. It is. I mean, our our we're so affordable in comparing ourselves to all lead generation programs out there. I mean, you could you could invest into street text as low as one hundred and sixty dollars on average monthly. Not yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Even if you only got one closing a month from that 160 bucks, I mean, you know, you're going to be wanting to budget for anywhere from seven to $10 a day. Once you get that good ad and be willing to embrace the testing aspect of it early on. So when you do a trial, we're actually going to want you to do what we call the macro and micro model. So we want you to test out, you know, the County or the, you know, the Silicon Valley tar by targeting the five different areas within the Valley but we're also wanting you to target your specific farming areas. So if it was Santa Monica, for example, or San Francisco, trust us when we've got the, the method behind it, we're going to teach you and we're going to train you. And we do it every single day, just like this on zoom video conferencing. Yeah. I love it, dude. I, I can't wait to give it a try. And, uh, and I know that uh, there's a bunch of excited people leaving comments. So um, yeah, I'm going to set my account up and uh, give it a spin, and then I'll have some, uh, we'll have some social proof for you. Awesome. Sounds good. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being on. I, I learned a few things. Now I'm excited to onboard. So uh, <laughs> I already know, I've been texting my teams on the side here. I'm like, okay, okay what city do you guys want? Hey, guys, 9 o'clock tomorrow is our first training, so anybody's welcome to come, even if you don't have a, a Street Text trial. You can just come check it out, learn a little bit more if you we'll like. We'll give that. you the, the Zoom video link. Um, it's a live conference, and so it's just a fun place to mastermind and talk. And we, I love the Zoom aspect because we can see each other. So even if you have 50 people on, we have the little windows everywhere, right? It's the best place to do this. Very true. All right. Thanks, right, guys. guys. Cool. Thanks. Awesome. Well, see you soon. Thanks, Tristan. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, guys.